Ramble. Thank you to Simple Contacts and Feels for sponsoring today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the Tripod. We're the Tri Guys. It's Keith. Hey. It's Zach. Whoa. It's Ned. Hi, hi. And Miles. Yo. We are going to talk about so many wonderful things today. You wrote in to our special Gmail when you happened to be inebriated, and of <laughs> course, over 21. So we will be reading those out and reacting to your of questions. Course. Of course. We just got back from our Pacific Northwest tour dates, the closing night of the Legends of the Internet in Seattle. It was epic. It was crazy. It was nuts. So people were like, there's videos of people singing along to the playlist like 20 minutes before the show even started. Not just singing. They were up, up in their yeah. seats. Smash Mouth All-Star. Apparently, we should have played that before we went on stage at every single city. I, we were backstage getting ready and all of a sudden, like I could just, it was a wave mm-hmm. of people singing uh, as loud as they could, screaming Hey now, here in Austin. It really gave me, that was like the energy I needed to just knock that show out of the park. It was probably our most perfect shows. Technically perfect. The audience volunteers were awesome. The audience itself was incredible. So towards the finale, one, first of all, Ned and I were sick probably that whole weekend. Uh, Ned especially, you had a horrible pretty, cough. And every time you went to sing. Yep. Uh, what would it's it, like uh, well i had to sing an octave lower than normal because you sounded, you sounded anytime sexy. i started going like ah. <laughs> there it is there it is <laughs> yeah yeah so i sing all my songs down here oh you it sounded hot, hot. yeah there's also there's a there's a couple points of the show where i get to like set up something and make ned laugh in a horrific way and i forgot three nights in a row that I was making him do these very challenging high-pitched laughs that then made him cough. Yeah, me laughing just normally will make me trigger a coughing fit, but laughing in a funny character voice definitely, yeah, it's like a, it's been lasting for a while, about two weeks. (laughs) So I drank normally about four or five bottles of water during our show, but this show, because I was sick, I probably drank like nine Just every second I was off stage, I was chugging one to two bottles. At the very end of the show, we have this emotional, like, ballad song. And it's this beautiful moment of the song where you go, you can surprise yourself. And we harmonize, and it's really cute. And we, like, floating to each other in the middle of the stage. It's it's the big finale of our final show. And I go to sing that line, and I vomited in my mouth. What? (laughs) I just, I don't know if it was all the liquid or the ill feeling. And so I go, you can... and I caught it in my mouth <laughs> and I'm looking at the audience and like every eye is on me and I just held that line and I just swallowed it Ew. and I kept it together and I sang the second line and I finished that fucking why, show. Why would you tell us this? Because now we're so upset that you actually didn't vomit. That would have been so, <laughs> yeah. that would have been so funny. So that would have been, the, that would have been hilarious. It would have been a projectile. <laughs> like it was, I felt it. It was a missile that came up from out of nowhere and I didn't eat anything. I don't eat five hours before the show. It wasn't like some bad scallops or something like that. Usually people say vomit in your mouth as like, uh, you know, a turn of phrase, but you literally vomited in your mouth and oh. then swallowed it back down. Yeah, no, it it shot up and I Ew. caught it. Would you say that you surprised yourself? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I did so well that I did find pride in myself. There well, I had a little bit of a crazy customs adventure. Did I tell you guys about this? Well, yeah, we it's kind great. of got a gist of it, but we don't know the deets. Yeah, well, so we had difficulty shipping our T-shirts, all of our merchandise into Canada because it's an international uh, place. There's a border crossing, NAFTA, all this stuff. And so we figured we would just carry it by hand. We could we packed a whole bunch of like sweatshirts and like t-shirts. We have posters and we're like carrying them through customs. And here's the critical decision. Do we declare it and say, "Hey, we're bringing in this merchandise. We intend to sell it. We pay some sort of a tax or do we just try to slide on through, say we have nothing to declare? Basically, do we smuggle t-shirts into Canada?" Three of us kept walking through. Three of us uh, did not declare anything. And one of us, 
who wanted to follow the rules <laughs> and not get thousands of dollars worth of fines just in case because we do uh, as a group kind of band looking sort of group of people might be willing to ask some questions. Anyways, I declared it and Keith, then I you, went into Keith, a separate line. Keith, did you even see it as an option? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, but what so are you, are you bringing along like goods with the intent to sell slash distribute? And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm on not. my person right now. No. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> uh, is there a bag I'm receiving check luggage? It is. Yeah. But right now, <laughs> no. <laughs> so I said yes. And so everyone is like flying through because it's the US Canada border. It's probably one of the chillest borders out there. <laughs> It should I, be. I mean, it's, it's moderately chill. You when know, you, we all know a Canadian friend whose student visa ran out and they got into bad, bad situation. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's a pretty chill border. When you mm -hmm. enter the country, they go, oh, welcome. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so they were, everyone's just streaming through. Nothing to declare. Nothing to declare. Nothing to declare. I go to then a separate counter. And this isn't just like someone at a placard. This is like a man in a booth. And he's still, he's just the nicest. He's like, okay, so you're going to do a show Oh, a show, eh? Uh, but, and I, and so you said you had some uh, commercial goods with you, uh, but it's not that much, right? I was like, yeah, no, it's not that much. He's like, okay, so like, since it's just like props and costumes, you're not selling anything, right? I'm like, well, no, no, I am <laughs> selling some things. And he's like, yeah, but you're not, you're not like selling a whole, like a large amount, at least. Like, what's the value of what you're selling? So I say, you know, a number. And he's like, ah, oh, it's like a couple thousand dollars. He's like, oh, I don't, oh, gosh. Oh, you know, oh, it's really right on the border there. He really wanted he, you he to wanted just lie to him. Nothing <laughs> he was <in> more. <laughs> he was like, his face was begging me to just lie to he him. He was like, listen to me, dude. I'm not looking for you. There's a dude next to you who has a 20 pound bag of just weird spices. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to stop you. So then he's like, okay, well, you know, that amount, you should probably go to the cashier. And then I go to the cashier. These two sweet young women, they are Try Guys fans. They're super excited. <laughs> and they say, okay, well, we're going to have to charge a duty on this. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. but I'm not actually the seller. Live Nation is the seller. Maybe they're supposed to pay for it. And they're like, well, we're not sure. So we'll send you, we'll just, you can go on ahead and someone else will verify your bag. So I think maybe now these are guys are Try Guys fans. They're letting me off without having to pay my duty tax, which first of all, that's a funny word. It's a very funny <laughs> word. Duty. Can we take a I, moment for I'm, that's a very for funny duty, word. Duty I'm taxes. Tell you, I'm barely holding it together. Duty. <laughs> I don't know how the government expects the whole world not to laugh at that. So all of these really nice customs agents they're saying nothing but sorry and A. <laughs> and I think I'm going to get past, join my friends, and then the verification area, they say, okay, you need to go into the verification area. And that's when it all went bad. Ooh. I got into the danger area for <laughs> bad people. Oh. This is the detainment <gasps> area for nasty, you know, people that are up to some bad stuff. Did you see so, other criminals in there? Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, other criminals. <laughs> well, it's a criminal. I was not a criminal. A criminal. I was <laughs> just needed to verify the amount of tax, duty tax I had to pay. One but, guy's no. in there. He's like, I just want to travel on vacation to Canada with my 6,000 snails. I don't see what the big deal is. It's <laughs> just me so, and no, my I'm snail. I'm not a criminal. <laughs> it was suddenly everyone was a lot less nice. All the chairs were a lot less comfortable. And everyone there is having a very difficult conversation. There's one guy. He's like on the verge of tears. He's speaking through a translator. And this poor guy, the customs agent, is Aww. grilling him saying, so you're saying you've been a student since 2007. Aww. You're taking online courses, but you don't know what they are. Are you staying, overstaying your visa? Yes or no? And he's like, uh, uh, uh. He's like, do you speak English? Yes or no? It's like, it's like grilling this guy who, you know, student since 2007. It's 2019. He's 12 years. He probably is overseeing. Probably <laughs> is overseeing his student visa. Probably. But, <laughs> and again, Canada is a great place. I'm sure he's doing great things. But mm. yeah, it was like, it was suddenly, I'm looking around and there's this one guy's crying. This one guy's yelling at him. And then on the other end, there's a guy that's like, okay, we're going to deport you. <gasps> You're mm. on the next flight out. We have a flight at 2.30. Do you want a sandwich before you go? And They're I'm giving like, out oh free sandwiches? Oh my God. One, somebody is getting straight up deported from Canada right now. 
And two, they're offering them a free sandwich, which is kind of nice. It's still silver lining. Uh, Maybe. Have you had an airport sandwich before? Yeah, it's more like they're a, not that's good true. sandwiches. So, I'm but more like a punishment. I go from this like really nice, everyone's really friendly to like this is the the intense area where customs agents are doing a difficult job of deciding who gets to come in and who doesn't and what sort of goods get to come in. And I look over, there's someone they unzip a suitcase. There's all these like weird, they're like you know, the whole suitcase is filled with these strange peppers. <laughs> <laughs> they have like Chinese lettering on them. They're they're like bursting, overflowing out of these like rucksack things. I'm like, what's that guy doing with all those peppers? <laughs> I would like some of that. Anyways, <laughs> a custom agent comes over. They unzip my bags. They look. They find that there's t-shirts in there. I say the val, you know, the dollar value amount. They say, okay, that looks about the right amount. And then I uh, and then I pay did, my duty tax. Did you get a sandwich on the way out? No, they did. They kept me there for I don't know, maybe forty five minutes. wasn't sandwich worthy. Mm-hmm. That's pretty polite of them to offer a Sammy before you go, though. I'm sure it's it, probably yeah. just a, like a legal thing. Yeah, they have to. Like, legally, what if that dude yeah. passes out on a twelve hour flight home because I mean, he hasn't eaten? These That's are true. like those stories that you hear about, you know, especially mm-hmm. on the U S Mexico border. That's even. Well, you know, far, far worse. Yeah, but and you yeah. got through with all those peppers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, me and the pepper yeah. guy. <laughs> I uh, we go when, way back when you when you check into Vancouver, they ask if you want to declare any marijuana, and I was like, no, but could I? <laughs> like, could I have? I, I could fly here with Mary Jane in my suitcase. It's, it's federally legal, so I wonder how they. <gasps> They uh, but like I can cr- I can you just cross say, yeah. the border with it like that seems but you can't cross back <sighs> it seems like a trap well you can't cross back if you're only crossing into uh, Washington because Washington mm-hmm. is is state legal oh, wow. I don't know I don't know it's like it's tough to say because that federal uh-huh. state difference is always tricky because the airlines TSA is federal but mm. sometimes they like abide by state policies like in the airports it's weird so you guys are done with your tour. How's it feel? You're finished. That show will never be done that way again. Yeah. Yeah, it feels Probably. surreal because we started in June. June. And now it's finally done. Yeah. yeah. Now it's cold out. Uh, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it was, it, you know, this is the Even weirdest. The summer of Tri is over. Yeah, <laughs> weirdest summer because it was the summer of Tri, but it felt like there was no summer. Like I didn't do anything summery. You didn't really get. I didn't go down any water there, slides. What? Not a single fucking water slide. Do you this normally summer. do that? I try to <laughs> at least one. You I love gone, a good slide. You could have gone to Schlitterbahn. I could have. We didn't have the time for that. Well, we didn't have time for. We were always going, 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 and none of the hotels that we stayed in had water slides. The few times that we did have hotels, I, I didn't even get in the pool. Oh, I think I got in my apartment pool once, mm. only once. What's so like the, the biggest entertainment thing you've done for yourself this whole summer? Because we've really been working Ooh, pretty consistently. Entertainment thing for myself. I went to Disneyland. I love Disneyland. <sighs> you went to Star Wars I Land. finally went to Star Wars that Land. That was dope. Oh, it's yeah. so cool. Mm. It was only half built, but it was still so cool. <laughs> Did you do the pilot thing Keith said to do? Yeah. We went in the single rider line and we just mm. got lucky in the pirate, uh, pilot seat. <laughs> Millennium Falcon, they are pirates. <laughs> they yeah, are pirates. That's true. That's technically the pirates. Got to scene. make the jump to hyperspace. Like, I, I have that's a awesome. question that's a little bit of a segue, but I, it's very distracting me. Eugene, where's your other dog? Oh, she's at the dentist right now. <laughs> oh. a, she's at the dog dentist. I need to go to the dentist. Yeah. Wait, what do you do at a dog dentist? You have to take your dog every year. <gasps> really? Yeah, to get teeth cleanings. Wait, did we talk about this? Am I having deja vu? No, they were at a vet recently. Oh, they went to their dog they doctor went to, a vet to get the shots. But wow. today they're at the. She's at. I the need dentist. to get some shots. She needs to get a. <laughs> is my is Emma more caught up on her annuals than you guys are? Yeah, yeah. I, I have like three yeah. like things from my doctor being like, you need to come get these vaccines. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm supposed get to get to the it. flu. It's just shot. A, their offices are so far, <laughs> and you can't schedule a time, so you just have to go to the lab and assume, and hope they're not busy. And like, uh, I don't really want to go to lab on a random time and it actually uh, be busy and wait forever. Plus, because I got to go all the way. I gotta go like a forty minute drive away to go have somebody hurt me. <laughs> I want to I want the shots. Why can't they come to me? Mm. Why can't you, they have a, a roving door to door doctor with, with They should do food trucks are a huge trend. Right. Immunization Do- trucks. trucks. That's a great idea. Doc trucks, yeah. Doc truck. 
Well, Doc do it for blood donations. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a bit of a segue. Zach, why are you rocking that Samuel L. Jackson look with the sunnies inside? <laughs> yeah. I, I've I, just been curious. He looks I mean, look really chill. Really yeah, chill, though. Very chill. Is, are the brights I mean, too light I right know now? that we have a CBD sponsor this episode. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing. You, you guys know when your life is just like too lit. <laughs> to oh handle, God. yeah, um, yeah, uh-huh. for sure. yeah. yeah. N- yes, my I sister is visiting, and so I, and I'm also sick. I'm very sick, but sure. my sister's here visiting. I mean, so, so am I, but you know. Oh, I you went sure. to their concert last I, night. Last night we went to go see the Jonas Brothers. <gasps> <gasps> what? The night, the night before I went to the Magic Castle, and tonight I'm going to Lizzo. I'm just living my little lit life. Oh, yeah. You got Lizzo ticks? Magic yeah, Castle, dog. Jonas Brothers, and Lizzo in three consecutive Shit. nights. Wow, you've done, more, you've done more by yourself than we've all done over the summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Last night, Jonas Brothers concert. Is it weird to say, like, I'm proud of them? <laughs> well, you you've been a mega fan since you were a kid. I was never so my sister weird, yeah. is the biggest <laughs> mega fan of the Jonas Brothers. I've talked about it before. Like like on tour, she'll see them three nights in a row. If they play six nights in a row, she'll see them six nights in a row. She wow. planned her vacation to come to LA. She had to come for work, and we're like, maybe it should just happen to be when the Jonas Brothers are playing a concert. <laughs> uh, first of all, very exciting. They start their show like our show. They come out and they're all in uh, like single color outfits. Yes. They have Joe's in all pink. That's you, Ned. Yeah. Nick's in all green. I was very honored. Uh, sorry, Keith, you were not represented on stage. Uh, what other color? It was purple. But Kev Joe was, was purple? all in purple. purple. And they come out in, in like these like silhouettes. Purple. And it's, I was like, wow. We made a good show because we're doing what the Jones brothers are doing. Uh, Maybe they saw our show. That's what I was thinking. They're copying. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah, well, good I'm sure artists they did. steal. <laughs> yeah. I bet you that they saw what we did and they're like, I want a piece of that. Yep. Ned, I was born with imperfect eyes. Oh, no. They're not good. But the glasses frame your face so nicely. They really do. And you know what else I use from time to time when I'm going to the beach and I want to wear my sunnies? Yeah? I wear simple contacts. What? Simple contacts is the most convenient way to renew your contact lens prescription and reorder your brand of contacts from anywhere in minutes. Simple contacts is basically a way to just reorder your prescription without going through the doctor. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's great. And if you need to renew your prescription, you just take the five-minute simple contacts vision test online and it'll be reviewed by a licensed doctor and you'll receive a renewed prescription and order your contacts all you need is your current contacts and internet connection and 10 feet of space even if you're totally out of contacts they've got an option for you too and if you have an unexpired prescription and need more contacts you just upload a photo of it and your doctor's information and you order your lenses they do all the hard work for you and take care of verifying and confirming your prescription. So they just do it. The reviews, they speak for themselves. Simple Contacts have been rated five stars over 5,000 times on the App Store. You can text with the support team and always get to speak with a person. You don't have to speak to like robots. You can speak to people. It's great. It, you know, it's it's so easy to do. It saves you money. The vision test is only 20 bucks, which compared to an appointment, which without insurance is like 200 bucks. So it's really a great way to do it. The contact lens prices are unbeatable. The standard shipping is free and best of all they have a promotion for our listeners so you can get twenty dollars off if you go to simplecontacts.com slash tryguys20 or enter code tryguys20 at checkout that's 20 bucks off you could use that twenty dollars on a pizza or on a couple sandwiches from a pizza shop. Just remember that Simple Contacts only tests that your current prescription still helps you see 2020 and you can renew that prescription. They don't completely provide new prescriptions or examine eye health, but they can get you new contacts for your current prescription without having to go to the doctor. You get $20 off if you go to simplecontacts.com slash tryguys20 or enter code tryguys20 at checkout. That's simplecontacts.com slash tryguys20 or tryguys20 at your checkout. You know, I would like you guys to weigh in on this. And actually, Eugene, I think you will be the opinion I'm most interested in, but I'd like you to withhold and and let the straights debate who is the hottest Jonas brother, because that was the debate raging all night long. And I seem to be on the other side. Just just real quick. Who do you guys think is the hottest Jonas brother? Okay, we got Joe, we got Nick, or we got the other one. I don't know all the Kevin. Kevin. Kev, yeah, okay, I'm just going to be real. I'm not being mean. Kevin's not winning this. But no, I just, lo- but no. Kevin's the sweetest. He's the sweetest. I will say... I think but, like Nick's the most famous and Joe's the most handsome, right? Which, which Isn't one that is, typically how it breaks down? Nick is is married to Priyanka Chopra. Is he the Jumanji? That's an automatic He's in victory. Jumanji. He's Jumanji. He's a hottie. 
I mean, that's he's an auto very, wing. He's very little. He's small. He's not a tall guy. <laughs> but he's beefy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is, but he can never work out enough to get taller. Okay. That's so just <laughs> how working out works. You only get broader. You don't get taller. At one point in the show, Kevin comes out. He's wearing a suit, and then he just, like, rips his jacket off, and he's in, like, a suit tank top. <gasps> and, that's funny. And our friend, Alix, who we were with, goes, I think I'm on the hashtag hot Kev train. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, okay, everyone that I was with... They think that Nick is the hottest. And then some of them were saying Joe's not even that hot. And I think Bring Joe is super hot. I get like I get Nick is charming, but I think Joe's got all the I think Joe's cooler. Nick's got a better <coughs> face. Joe's taller. Joe's the one with the special band that Zane DNCE DNCE. Okay, yeah. cool. Zane uh, is a totally different guy. Yeah. Okay. That's you, One Direction. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Yeah. 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 Gene, I've, I've requested silence for I long think, enough. I uh, think. I think Nick's the hottest. I'm looking at him now. You know. Describe yeah. why. Why. Why do you think Nick's the hottest, Ned? Uh, I don't know. He's got like a sharp jaw and like more even features. The other two guys look a little goofy. Yeah, I don't like the other guys' faces as much. <laughs> I like Nick's face. He's got it, that jawline and shape. The skin you know, tone is nice. He's and rocking pleasant. this like closely cropped facial hair, which like obviously I appreciate. Yeah, Joe kind of looks like he's been in a rainstorm <laughs> right before the photo happened. All right, Eugene, care to weigh in? <laughs> Okay, so I know the right answer. Let but. me let me dissect this for y'all a little bit. Also, Priyanka she's got great taste. She's Anyways, got wonderful taste. Uh, think Eugene. about how tiny he is. Yeah, but Joe's with Sophie Turner. Sansa Stark. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, they they also they have beautiful a legendary. Ones. Does that make Joe the new king of the north? Hey, <laughs> well he's well a, a so crown prince. I think mm -hmm. when you look at say a boy band or a girl group or you know any group of people. Uh, hotness is one way to describe, I think, more of a full package attractiveness, mm. as opposed to many times there's another member who might be more traditionally pretty Ooh. or physically oh, good looking. I think Joe is the prettiest. I think Joe is the pretty Joe's boy, the but Nick is the hottest. <laughs> no, if, Joe, Joe has always drugs. been... Have, do you remember when they were young too? Joe was always the pretty I one. I don't remember when they were young. I was not a fan then. But Joe I was always both the pretty of them one in person. And I think that Nick is more beautiful, more handsome, but unfortunately very small. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. Well, so they all look you gotta to be about to the same height. Yeah. And all I, wait, these this is photos. important. Keith is the only one who's met them in person, which does make me start to trust his hot meter. But also, you keep saying he's very small. Is he smaller than me? He's like your size, but beefier. Okay, so then are you saying that I can't be hot? It's tougher for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not as big as me. It is, it I, is. People just love big people. I mean, it's a big thing. Like, people love it when somebody's big. Every time you see a really, really big person, aren't you excited? <laughs> like, if you get an elevator with a seven foot tall guy, you're like, whoa, you're so big. People love it when people are big. An important question. Do you think you're hotter than me? Yes. <laughs> Almost entirely from height. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 nothing else, just the height. Got if, it. If we switched heights, you'd be hotter. Wow. <laughs> Especially if you kept your skinniness, because you'd be like a like a slender. Yeah, because remember, <laughs> yeah, he's the hottest. Not one. to like boy band people, but there's also the <laughs> typically someone who's considered cuter. Yes. Especially when you have a group of more than three. Uh huh. So you have hot one, mm -hmm. a good looking one, uh -huh. and a cute one, and like the romantic. And hotness t typically takes on like what I would consider like more traditionally masculine traits that mm -hmm. people like associate with hotness like ruggedness and height yeah beefiness did yeah. you know that every inch taller you are you make on average eight hundred dollars more a year <laughs> no way that's why i think Is that true yeah well, I mean, it's yeah. a, you know, it's a correlation. Well, do you know that? Um, <laughs> but it may also be a causation. <laughs> we, uh, how many are we? Is Trump our forty fourth president? Yeah, yeah, forty two have been over six foot. That's crazy. He's a monster. Apparently, yeah, they're all huge. Life. Over six foot. Yeah, He's like he six four. He is a monster, but like yeah. visually as well. Yeah, <laughs> we we are a heightest society for sure. Well, and yeah. it's interesting. But you yeah, say about Nick is the hottest. What okay. you say about the cuteness is that they were all the girls were like, "Oh, Nick's so cute. He's so squishy. Look at his little face." But then anytime they saw his muscles, they'd go like, "Oh." Well, no, yeah. that's that's a, tr a traditional uh, evolution. Many times of the youngest cute member in a group who turns hot, like the Timberlakes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it happens often. It happens a lot in K-pop. There's always the young member who gets hot at some point. So wait a second. 
Because I have the, the most young, growth. I'm the youngest of us. But they're also usually 14 when they start. I'm the yeah. You get time. You're, you're I 20. Look, I eight, I, you nine, know, just a little late. Just <laughs> double that. But are you? T- there's a future where I get super beefy. Yeah, you yeah. put on like 40 pounds of muscle. I, I get like my Timothy Chalamet glow up. I just get get yeah. some lbs on me. Is he ripped now? No, but you want no. him to. You keep talking oh, I about it. Love, <laughs> I love Timothy Chalamet's body. I mean, he's little now. <laughs> okay, Whoa. Miles. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Miles. 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 He's, who's, who's, he's little now, but I want him to pack on like a hundred pounds of muscle. Okay, who's hotter, Timothy oh, Chalamet or Joe Jonas? Uh, Timothy Chalamet. You're out of your mind. <laughs> I don't You're know what he's out looks of like. your How mind. Tall is he? Timothy Chalamet. Joe sings. He's the charisma of the band. But Joe would like. Like beat up a nerd by a locker and timothy <laughs> shalmi would be that nerd yeah that's true yeah i think i think timothy is, is hotter especially guys- in 2019 <laughs> timothy shalmi is hot you guys are nuts. <laughs> Find me a photo where Joe doesn't look drenched in water. <laughs> you're I'm also just, just telling you. you're a super fan, so you have a bias. You think they're always hot. <laughs> you know what it was is that my sister chose Nick, so I'm like, well, I guess Joe's mine. No, I Joe's very good looking, but he's not. He's not the hot one. Yeah, he's not ugly. He just looks like wet. <laughs> All the time. like he looks like he's in a leather jacket in the rain. I wasn't totally sure what Timothy Chalamet looked like. I was like, is that the guy from? And now I see some photos, and I'm like, wow, he's he's hot. He's he's serving some looks. <laughs> he's, he's very right Abercrombie now. hot, right? Yeah, but yeah. he's like he could be a poster in Abercrombie. I mean, his chin hot. can cut yeah, diamonds. Yeah. Matthew Gray Gubbler walked so Timmy could run. <laughs> yeah. What a sure. similar look. Abercrombie hot is like super jacked with no. uh, with a what are you talking about? Sometimes. Yeah, Tim- it's just the long hair. No, oh. no. Timothy, Timothy's more like Don't a... Don't mean American apparel hot? Timothy's more like a French uh, period hot. Him yeah. too. Them too. Yeah. I think that whole... Like, that that late 90s, early 2000s where Abercrombie, Hollister, and Air Apostle were like the only brands you were apparently wearing in high school. And all and they all had the, the girls' shirts had the short sleeve and they had Abercrombie <laughs> on the on right across the breast. Or Hollister right across the breast. Or you know what I'm talking about? You guys remember these shirts? Yeah, but and they weren't they didn't look in, like Timothy Chalamet. No, no, no. But you go into the store, I'm just talking about the store. Go to the store, it smells crazy. And there's just like like thirty six six foot posters of like of like hot surfers and you're like wow they're hot and then you're like i should buy this shirt so i think i'm hot but and then all the bags had like sexy naked people on them yeah that yeah. was like a so whole where does, thing i mean got me to take up surfing <laughs> and where's timothy in this equation well he looked like a guy who could have been on the wall but just his face and hair okay. his hair looked like an abercrombie model's hair I just want the record to say, state that I do think Timothy Chalamet is hot. I just, I'm, I can't believe this Joe what is, Jonas. What does Timothy Chalamet do? He acts. He's an actor. Mm, He's a very is, talented actor. What is he in? Call, Me, Call by Me By Your Name. name. He was nominated Lady for an Bur- Lady, Oscar. Lady I didn't watch that movie. It's a great movie. He's Call Me By Your Name. He's in The Lady Bird. I didn't watch that movie either. He's going to be in Little Women. Oh, I... Looks I don't good. have any plans yet for that film. You should. <laughs> Christmas Day. I'll see you there. Well, I, I will be here for Christmas. <laughs> really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's party. Okay. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> All right. All right. See you then. In conclusion, you should you should refer to me when you're asking about what people probably I, find hot. Yeah. I knew you had the right answer, but that's why I wanted to delay it as much as possible. Yeah. Also, Nick did a lot of uh, appealing to the gays in his comeback, did he not? He did almost to a queer baiting level, but he mm. ever to each to each their own. You have your own personal taste. And I know, it just sounds like you. Yeah. Do we you appeal just, to the gays without just, queer baiting? Who's the most appealing to it the It just gays. sounds like Nick. The, uh, what? what? One, I just want to tread us, that line. Including oh. Miles. Which one of us, including Miles, is the most <laughs> appealing you. to the gays? Probably Miles. Really? Fuck. Why? Because he hasn't ruined. Actually, one of my very, um, very discerning gay friends. This is a true story. Texted me recently with a screenshot from the Halloween video where you're in the squirrel suit and uh-huh. asked, is this guy hot? <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessarily no, no, no. a compliment. When gay men ask that, or it's like a girl asking, it's like, is this guy hot? Oh, you, you know yeah. why? Really nice. You know why? It's the beard and the height. Miles is huge. I am beard big. And I'm He's pretty big. The which again, biggest man in the which office. again is a, a traditional thing people might be attracted to. <laughs> and who does wow. he stand by man. in that video? He stood so next Zach. to me. Wow. And now you have a heavy true. beard. That's kind. And you have heavy bushy brows. Wow. And you're a tall guy. So wait. So why did he have to ask if Miles? He was wanted hot? to check to see because like he didn't want to be under the hood. I'm not crazy, right? This guy is hot. Is more almost wow. the subtext of that. Uh, that is very kind. But hotness is different that. than you know. Hotness is is relative. 
But also, if you speak of a hotness, it tends to lean into what we usually call like traditional, like, I want to fuck that person because mm-hmm. of xyz things i've been taught about your biology yeah Yeah. and your social conditioning through the magazines Mm -hmm. and the movies but tastes are shifting so like hotness is being redefined timothy chalamet even though you're talking about his abercrombie he's quite feminine in terms of his the way he presents and how he stands and his he's very very skinny he's culture is changing i didn't see a body shot i only saw a face shot let me put go on the record here i only saw (laughs) because you also never saw (laughs) call me by your name i don't know what he looks like i didn't see his body i only saw his head (laughs) you just saw blue eyes and white skin you're like yeah and and the hair was so wavy yeah he has beautiful hair and the stare at me through the camera i was like he's looking right at me i feel like men would be thrilled to fuck all of us uh, well some i'm just telling you as a gay man what i know be. from the other gays wow miles congratulations thank you i feel to... honored to be nominated <coughs> yeah i uh, know i think you nominated and won <laughs> I mean, and yeah, a, a field of one and speaking of fields of one <laughs> we did a very special thing on the tripod the other week where we asked you after we read a very special uh, drunk email to email in to i'm drunk try guys at gmail.com while you were drunk and send us your thoughts, opinions, questions. Now, let us be clear real quick. We're not asking you to go get drunk. Mm-hmm. We're saying when you're inebriated, put us in the back of your brain, and then you go like, oh, shit, I should email the Try Guys right now. Also, we, uh, you're all over 21, and we thank you for that. Yes. But really, or we, 18 do, want, in we other do want you to only be legal drinking age in your country. Yes. Yes. We really do believe in that. We do believe Honestly, in that. you shouldn't drink until you're 25, but that still do that's never so? going to happen. You know, but, that is you know, true. Your brain, yeah. you know, people also aren't supposed to have smartphones until they're 25. Oh, that's never going to It's never going to happen, but because our brain chemistry is so fragile and still forming, it like really causes damage. And I just all. bought a phone for Wes. <laughs> I haven't given it to him. Yet. Wait, what? <laughs> no, no, I'm, just, I'm just playing. Um, but I've our, been shopping. All right, so we've got a bunch of emails from these people who are drunk and wrote into the podcast. Keith, I'm going to have you read this one. They would like you to read it as Shrek. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hi, Miles it's, and the Triforce. It's 2 a.m. and I am slippery, sloppery, smotherly smashed. <laughs> <laughs> I have a moral dilemma, donkey. It doesn't say that. I just need that to get there. <laughs> I have three doggos and one is about 14 and one is about seven. And the crazy ass youngster is three. As I type this email to you, one hand in my other hand holds a pizza crust. <laughs> <laughs> my three doggers <laughs> are looking at me and I need your assistance, donkey. Do I? One, break it into three pieces and give them each a piece. Two, Break them into different size pieces and give my oldest pupper the biggest piece because he's a senior citizen and deserve reserves it. And three, give the whole thing to the old boy because YOLO, he he. <laughs> Please give me advice as soon as possible because the old dog is drooling so much. He wants the pizza sauce so badly. Thank you for your life-saving advice, boys. Fiona. <laughs> no, I was not named after Shrek. Sounds like. Oh, it's from Fiona. You can say that whole part on the podcast if you want. That was a funny one. (laughs) (laughs) Piss. I mean, (laughs) P.S. By the time I finally typed all uh, one-handed, I ate the entire pizza crust and gave each of my doggos a hot dog. (laughs) Oops. I'd still like to know what you guys would have done if you were in my shoes. Thanks. Bye now, donkey. A, a great twist ending, my goodness. So the, the, she was cooking hot dogs all that time. I know. She, you're, if you couldn't understand what I was saying, she had a piece of bread and wanted to know which dog to give the most bread to. E- Eugene, you're both our male hotness expert as well as our dog expert. So why don't we have you take this one? <laughs> yes, as one with multiple dogs. I can answer that quickly. Mm. Equal parts. Mm. Y- because your dogs know. <gasps> It's not a, oh, they're, they're not going to get it that the older dog got a huge piece. They know when, M and Pesta, they know if the other one got more of something. It's just a, it's just a matter of like, that's why they eat so fast. Because <clears throat> their timing, I think, in their brains, how long it's taking them. And if someone else is munching for like five minutes, they're like, oh, well, fuck, they got so much more than me. And they're going to come back to you and, and beg for more. It's better that they all stop together at the same time and then look at you at the same time. Because then you're like, okay, it's done. Otherwise, you'll feel extra bad, and that dog will know because he's waiting for his sister or brother to finish the rest of the pizza crust. Mm. So, yeah, you always got to do equal parts. Even if you happen to like one more, or even if you think one is older, you got to be fair. 
Yeah. And you should separate it so that they don't, like, if your hands are too close together, you might uh, get a little snarling mm -hmm. fit. You know, you, you got to <laughs> get them on, like, either side of you. Be like, okay, this is your thing. This is your thing. Now, everybody, be cool. Play ball. And then they eat it. <laughs> it makes me think of when you, as, as humans eating, are going out and, like, eating family style when there's the one person that just eats so goddamn fast and then you got to step your game up. Even when you're, like, trying to have a nice leisurely mm -hmm. meal and you want to eat at your own relaxed pace. But now you're being forced to eat fast or else you are only going to get one piece of the spicy tuna. Yeah. I hate that shit. Wow. Well, you nice. eat very slow. You know, not compared to other people in my life, but compared to the giants that I'm surrounded by <laughs> here. Yeah. We I, eat fast. I, we need the meat to be hot. What I like to do, <laughs> I like to separate the meal. I, I, you know, if I like split food with Maggie, I'll like get my little salad and I'll, I'll do like a do not cross line, like in an old sitcom. I put uh -huh. the tape down the middle uh -huh. and I say, that's your side and you go at your pace. I'm going to go at mine. Yep. That's why you're not the hot one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always feel like now that I go to like a big meal and there's like a little bit of food left mm -hmm. and I'm like, I just start picking at it and then I just keep picking at it. And then suddenly I've eaten twice what everyone else has eaten. And then I'm trying to like be like, do you want this? And then they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, you please have it. I've eaten so much. I'm like, no, I can tell you want it. I'm like, no, I don't. But I will eat it if it remains on the table. But I don't need it. Please take it. And they'll be like, no, you have it. You eat it. Do, and then I eat. I eat it. Do you guys have that thing where if there's food, you'll keep eating even if you're not yes. full? Yeah, 100%. that's me. It's If it's there, I'll eat it. And if it, someone just takes it away... I won't eat it. Although I will be sad. I'm you ever sad. have a waiter try and take away a plate where there's still like a bite or two? A little crumbs. And you have to be like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm still working on it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to dip my <laughs> chopsticks in that sauce and swirl it around and then suck the chopstick. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm not yeah. talking about just soy sauce. I mean, I'm <laughs> talking about a, a serious bite or two. Right. Sometimes they think that you just don't want it, but I always want it. I, I'm, dude, I'm right there with you. I hate when my plate is cleared. It's actually something my grandmother, she thinks that it is like the absolute worst etiquette. It's the rudest thing in the world that if anyone is eating, you cannot take the plate away. Um, I know that about your grandma. Dudes, I am super amped to talk about this next sponsor. If you ever are out there experiencing stress or if you have anxiety or like me, you deal with chronic pain, I want you to know about Feels. Feels is a premium CBD company. They deliver directly to your doorstep. What? I love CBD. I actually, I really rely on CBD for a lot of my pain management. It's something that I found is a lot more effective than ibuprofen or, or any of the other pain meds. So Feels naturally helps you reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. It's the easiest thing to do. You just have this little dropper. You just do a couple drops underneath your tongue, and you will feel the difference within minutes. These guys were on tour with me all summer, and you know that I really relied on CBD, and it really helped me. Now, some people out there are like, what's CBD? I don't want to get high. That's the best thing. CBD is the non-psychoactive part of marijuana, so it has all oh. the positive effects, but you're not going to get high. So nice. Well, you could take CBD. Really? Yeah, and you because I know you don't want to get high. No. Right, but that's the greatest thing. One, you don't have to smoke it. Just a little couple drops under your tongue. You don't have to get high. You're just gonna feel relaxed. If you're new to CBD, like many people are, there Feels offers a free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide you through a personal experience. It works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high. And there's no hangover. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. Wait, that can't be right. Every month deliver? Wow, that is right. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels has me feeling my best every day and it can help you to become a member today by going to feels.com slash tryguys and you will get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash tryguys to become a member, get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash tryguys. Speaking of things that are unfair, we've got another email. This one is, uh, is, is, is serving up tea from a teacher um uh eugene i'm gonna have you read this one okay um and i don't know where they're from uh but they're a teacher and they are upset at one of their students okay <gasps> oh t so i'm drunk and completely relying on my phone's ability to autocorrect here we go <laughs> i'm a teacher <laughs> and i have a student who keeps telling me why are we doing this oh, who set this up why don't teachers go to school? 
fuck this kid. <laughs> I I have a master's degree <laughs> in fine arts. And this <laughs> asshole this, this asshole has the nerve to tell me to tell me that I didn't go to school. Want want to know what Want to know what a master in fine arts is? <laughs> you want to know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A term AI degree. <laughs> that means it's the highest someone can go in the field. I, I, I think I know my shit. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's a freshman at a college, not a university, a, a fucking college. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. What? A, what an asshole. Anyway, I'm going to finish my bottle of mead and watch. <laughs> mead! <laughs> Wait, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. She's getting yeah. drunk at a run fair. Wow. Uh, I'm going to finish my bottle of mead <laughs> and watch some YouTube and flip off the sky. <laughs> you guys are great. When my boyfriend uh, gets annoyed. Our YouTube feed is now full of Try Guys stuff, but whatever. Hashtag Miles Nation. <laughs> Oh, and I was supposed to ask a question. What is your favorite thing to touch? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good end. Uh, oh, wow. What does mead taste like? Honey. Oh, it's, it's like nasty. Honey. It's, like it's honey fermented honey. It's yeah. so sweet. That's what I thought it was very it's sweet. So, yeah. I mean, you think, because it's like usually like a Viking thing, you think it's going to be really hearty. Maybe it's foamy. No, it's basically like dessert wine. Yeah. And it's terrible. Yeah. He's been getting real in the dessert wine. Oh, I've been trying to expand my horizons and understand dessert wine because I don't get it because it's so sweet and syrupy and I don't understand why people like it. And what I like to do is try things I don't like to better understand. But what have you learned? That it's syrup, (laughs) that it is just like wine syrup. It almost tastes like, 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 um, like a very sweet wine reduction. Yeah. Like they've right. boiled it down. It should go over like a meat. Yes. It's so, it's like thick to drink. It holds onto the glass like crazy. I don't get it. I, I've, I've found the ones that I like. I don't like less, you yeah. know, uh, the white ones are awful, but I've watched the red you, ones are also not great. I've watched you talk to waitresses for about <laughs> 10 minute chunks Trying to just figure out which one is less awful. I want them to tell me, like, which one do you think is good? (laughs) Not just like, oh, it's good for a dessert wine. Do you think any of these are good? (laughs) I'll order whichever one. But What's your favorite thing to touch? A sleeping cat. Oh, Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Dude, good answer. Especially when your finger touches them and then they're still sleeping, but they start going. Yeah, when they purr and you sleep, you know, oh, and and their little, their little neck skin is so loose and so tickleable. I feel like for me, it's actually the sleeping cat's little nosy. I don't Aww. want to touch the nose. Oh, oh I nice. like the little wet, little but wet isn't nose. isn't there so much suspense that they could wake up if you touch their nose? The classic don't wake daddy situation. <laughs> you pet their nose uh, right here. You like the, the rush. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I get off on the adrenaline. <laughs> I like uh, feeling up duvet covers in a store. Feeling you know, up, feeling up. Well, you know, just touching, <laughs> touching them. Yeah. But pretending like, that they're a supple woman. And no, <laughs> no, like really soft uh, blankets and mm. stuff in stores. It's like I, I already have a blanket, so I don't need to buy this. And <laughs> oftentimes, a w- blanket that's super, super soft and silky is like too hot. Mm. But feeling it in a store is very fun because you get to feel all of them. Mm. You yeah. fuck with jersey sheets? Um, I did in college yeah. but they're pretty hot i yeah. have them right now and i don't i feel like they're underrated i i also I don't, don't have like them, them. But they're so warm is that, that it's, a thing? Been, it's been okay they're they're known for being warmer i yeah. run hot in like our our you know me yeah, and ariel's no, relationship so sometimes <clears throat> the temperature is, will be like at a point where i have the coverage completely off yeah she is like snuggled in complaining yep. of how cold she is yeah, you know, it's got to find that happy medium. Yeah, I get that. You do what you love to touch. Uh, my favorite thing to touch is probably my own penis. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I get that. I'm, I, I mean, you I know what? Good it. answer. Like, what, what Good answer. I, what have I touched the most in my life? <laughs> uh-huh. Great answer. Oh, Harvey, let me yeah. see your penis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say something like cute, but uh, to be honest, I think I probably touched my own dick and balls the most out of mm. anything mm-hmm. in my life. Yeah. yeah. It's, this, 
Probably, you know? yeah. Yeah, to adjust, to just like, even when you're just sitting there, I know it's so gross, I'm so sorry to the girls listening, <laughs> um, or anyone with decency, but you know, <laughs> uh, a lot of men just like involuntarily, just like your hand goes down there, and it's not even a sexual thing, it's just adjustment, no. or even like when I'm sitting, I'll find my hand just like resting on it. It's nice, it's it's like yeah. a secret protection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put your hands, cup your hands over your dick. Then. Look at how I'm sitting right now, my, my tea mug is, <laughs> is just literally resting on my on crotch. You can't yeah. see in the video, but it's true. But I do like touching my own penis. Wow. Yeah. I guess I was gonna say bubble wrap, but I'll I'll revise my answer and say Eugene's penis. Great. Let's move on to the Oh next. wow. <laughs> there it is. Hey. There's your there's your takeaway <laughs> joke for the episode. <laughs> Hope everybody's feeling well, hot. With these ninety degree angle glasses, I can look at my own penis all the time. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are just listening, Ned is wearing 90 degree angle glasses uh, that are blue and have mirrors. Mirror on glasses. Ooh, now I'm looking directly down at the microphone. It's like a periscope, but for not seeing anything out of your view. <laughs> now I'm looking at Keith's cry. Hey. What are you liking what you see, brah? Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, for this next one, this we got is, time for one more. We got time for one more. This is called "Wow, I'm fucking baked," <laughs> and um, we, yeah, you know, on the I'm drunk try guys email, we also appreciate a good stoned email if it's legal and you're legal. Uh, Zach, I'm gonna have you read this one. You know, I would like to hear the stoned impression from the only one of us that hates smoking weed. Ned. Oh wow, <laughs> absolutely. Wow. I guess Eugene's not a huge fan either, but it just feels Oh, no, like... no, no. I don't smoke, but I approve of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know that I hate smoking. Weed. <laughs> I just don't personally imbibe. You don't partake. <clears throat> this is subject. Wow, I'm fucking baked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yep. Sent at 9.44 a.m. Hell yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know what they call that, Ned? What? It's a wake and bake. Yes, I do know that. <laughs> I know some of the lingo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you call it bacon uh, shake when you're high at a club? Oh. Yep. <laughs> bacon shake? Bacon shake. Yeah, that's what we call it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if there's other cute terms. Do you call it take and bake when you smoke right after you buy it? Yeah. yeah. And okay. then they, uh, if you're ever going to go swimming, that's a good old lake and bake. Uh-huh. What about bake and bake where you do it with a friend? <laughs> yeah, you have to cook bacon though. Mm. Bacon, 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 bacon. bacon. <laughs> uh, all right. Please read this the same way a SoundCloud rapper would. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, these are all references that Ned loves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My favorite. Guys, do you like listen to trap music? Good trap, trap beat on SoundCloud. That's my jam. All right. <clears throat> Yo. So I'm watching the podcast right now, and Zach with a K. So, yeah, no, it's, that's not me. That's all. Um, no, that's, I'm, fu- I'm saying fuck you to this okay, dude. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> and Zag with the K said, get a little high and email in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. I'm <laughs> baked right now. Are in. And I know how to email. So, boom. <laughs> Thanks, Zach, for inspiring the birth of this email. <clears throat> I got you, dog. Preamble. So my question. What's my question? Uh, <laughs> I need a second to think of thing, thing. Boom. Got it. Can the try guy do a video with llamas? <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, people. I fuck with llamas on a real shit level. What, you want to talk about llamas? <laughs> I, I want nothing more than talk about llamas, but I just want to say that, see, sometimes getting drunk can lead to bad things, but getting high, it can lead to some pretty great things. Mm-hmm. I fuck with llamas on a real shit level. <laughs> they are everywhere in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see my favorite guys. With my second favorite YouTube creators. <laughs> Sorry, Shane is superior. Wow. <laughs> okay. He's popular. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, okay. yeah, he does good stuff. Just, I just wouldn't tell it to our faces. I know. It's I mean, you could have just said that we were like top three and you didn't yeah. have to specify. Yeah. <laughs> they baked out of their mind, though. <laughs> yeah, he's stoned. He's being honest. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. Wait. Wait for the twist. JK, JK, you guys are actually my favorite. Who knew I was this funny? <sighs> oh shit, Miles just says salamander. <laughs> I love salamanders. 
Anyways, if you guys ever find yourself in PA, feel free to, like, I don't know, do an improved comedy show. Sincerely, your favorite high person. Wow. Hell yeah, that was a great email. I loved that. Mm-hmm. Well, we definitely should do a video with llamas. Also, I've been thinking, like, should we do another video where we are high and experience something? Because we do, like, drunk taste tests. And, you know, weed is legal here. We could do, like high meat mm. animals that Don't, seems yeah. like stone dudes play with alpacas oh, I love yeah. that. llamas are very trendy right now <laughs> they my are my girlfriend's peruvian and you know llamas alpacas big big in peruvian yeah. art and so she's always had all this llama paraphernalia. yeah and then over the last couple of years of dating i've seen it explode it's like like bronze pineapples and llamas are yeah. the hottest thing in cheap interior decorating wow. i grew up with llamas <laughs> We did what? My what, what? There was like a neighbor, like three uh, houses down from me in Carthage, who for some reason had this giant plot of land that they had two llamas and two emus. What? And they just ran around partying, and I would go feed them carrots. So from like age seven, I would just regularly pet and feed giant birds and llamas. <laughs> That's awesome. And that was like, like I'd be like, I finished my homework. I'm like, all right, mom, I'm gonna go feed some carrots to the llamas. <laughs> Are you joking my ass right now? That was real. And the emus were very dangerous. I did not like the emus. They're very scary. That's scary. They, they can kill why you, are they dangerous? Uh, they were dangerous to an eight-year-old boy because they tower over an eight-year-old and their like face is mostly beak. And when you are offering a carrot to the llama, it also wants it. But it comes like, like it, it, its head just flies down with a big beak and nips at your hands. And then the llamas are spitting. It was a whole thing, but you're, it was fun. You're telling me you didn't meet a Jew until you were 18 years old. That's but right. You were partying with llamas uh-huh. and emus. Yeah. I thought you were just like in the middle of nowhere and nothing was happening, but you had these magic animals all yeah. around you. Yeah, and like also sometimes like animals would escape from the sale barn, which is where people sold livestock, and there would just be like cows in my backyard. <laughs> oh, I also definitely met a goat that I thought was a wild like mountain goat, and I like fed it, and I'm like, wow. I'm just like one with nature. Me and this goat are friends. And I'm like, wait a minute. This goat is probably from the sale barn. This is probably just somebody's goat. Yeah. <laughs> and it got out and it was in the backyard with me. And I was just like playing with this goat. And then I told my mom, she was like, really? No. And then I took my mom. There was just a goat that was incredibly friendly. And she was like, it's definitely a domesticated goat. Yeah. That's amazing. Oh. There were That's, bulls you, in my yard. You, bulls? Did you milk it? I did not milk the goat. I didn't even think to milk it. <laughs> I didn't even cross my mind. You're so right. I should have milked it. I love goat cheese. Salamander. Can you Salamander. milk a llama? I wonder. Yeah. If you try hard enough. Yeah. No, it, you can milk every, like, every mammal can be milked. And I assume all the big ones are. Mm. Except for that, uh, except whales. Birds. Birds aren't parent. mammals. <laughs> no. There you go. That's you, could, you could probably milk every mammal except for maybe birds. Probably not salamanders. Otherwise, you can milk all the mammals. Birds aren't mammals. Not mammals. Not salamanders. Yeah. Well, we're about to have a, our Australian series premiere. Uh huh. And the first video is us milking a salamander. <laughs> finally, <laughs> finally getting to do something with animals. So yeah. I want to do so many more animal videos. I'd be thrilled. I would love to whether it be high or with a llama i still want to do a whole series just around you with animals oh, that's I, so great you love I, animals i love them so much you could just read facts about animals I with wanna, animals and i, I want to produce that. that but i'd be so jealous well, <laughs> well you you'll get to meet him off the camera okay yeah. then i'm down they'll be there yeah. can you milk the weirdest can you milk an animal that we did not get to meet that i'm very sad platypuses Oh, yeah. They lay eggs, but they're mammals. I don't. So the, then, oh, yeah, I don't I think they are a mammal. Things with bills. I, mean, I thought they were mammals. Nurse. They're the only exception. No, they are. They are mammals. Yeah. They're the only a very exception. One. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Like in terms of what the rules are of what a mammal is, yeah. they're the only exception of like that's not the, supposed uh, to be a mammal, but, but it they, is a mammal. They, they right, are mammals. Right. 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 right but right. you can't nurse with a beak. That's true. So that like, would be painful. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like the bill makes it unnursable. It just doesn't seem... It's not a good shape for sucking liquid. Do you know until we went to Australia, I was convinced that platypuses were like the size of me. I thought they were at least the size of a small they dog. They tiny. And they're like the size of a like squirrel. a baby. Yeah, like a squirrel. Yeah. yeah. I, I was convinced they were just these giant fucking freak dinosaur bird mammals. R- waddling around like and they were like kind of cu- tiny crocodiles. Makes size. sense why I thought penguins were six feet tall. Yeah, nice. that make them hot. Makes make sense why so I hot. thought Kirby was a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's its own story. What's up? You Ready to have your animal facts minds blown? Hell what? yeah! Okay. Platypuses—they do give milk to their babies. <gasps> 
But unlike almost all other <clears throat> mammals, they don't have nipples. They feed them in Tide Pods. No. <laughs> Instead, no. they essentially sweat out their milk from pores along their stomachs. Whoa. So How do they... Then the the they, little they, eat it they just like lick beak. it off the stomach. Yeah, they okay. just oh, they scrape their bill across the belly of their mom, and they catch little droplets of milk in their bill. So it's wow. it's like milk sweat. They don't all the milk, no nips, just sweat. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, that's a wild good, uh, tagline that's for a, a new yeah. sports drink mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 called platypus. <All> milk. <laughs> platypus. Wow, what platypus. if we sweat milk? How disgusting <laughs> it would worst. be if we sweat milk. I'd let you sweat milk on me. I, you would let me sweat milk on you? Yeah. You would? Yeah. You would? I said that and I stand by it. You would? Salamander. It's because you're so tall and so hot. Yeah. Sounds like Zach is a living a confused life and maybe he needs some advice. I'm just so little. I don't so, know what's going on right? down here. You're so little. It's not that you're stupid. You're just not as hot as a taller version of yourself. I will say before advice uh, that will go for Miles that uh, the one funniest constant of meeting fans this summer across oh the, the United States is at the meet and greets. I would say a good third of them had an immediate comment about if we were taller or shorter mm-hmm. in their minds. Mm-hmm. Typically, wow, you guys are huge. That was the first thing they'd say. Mm-hmm. You guys are way taller than they thought. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they would be either say, Keith, you're so much shorter than I thought. Or to Zach, they'll be like, you are so tiny, Zach. The final meet and greet, <laughs> the last person that we met uh, for the whole tour just looked at me and goes, Zach, you are just so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put you in my pocket. Oh, wait, no. Your favorite of the meet and greets is when I said a joke to a girl. Oh, yeah. She was like, shut the fuck up, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Which we thoroughly enjoyed. But yeah. While posing for a photo, she just, shut the fuck up, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you want to see something fun, go to our the YouTube feed of our podcast and look at the last, I think it's the last episode. Yeah. I'm sitting next to Eugene, but I'm sitting further back and I look... Like the tiniest human being. Have you guys seen this? I think you showed me. It's yeah. it's startling. Well, Eugene has crazy good posture. I like yeah. good posture. It's, yeah, and I'm, I'm broader, and I have bigger a bigger face. Yeah, we get it. You're hot, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you just have like delicate, so tall. You have delicate features. features. So yeah, we get it. I, I'll never be hot because I'm so rippling <laughs> muscle. I get. Look at this. Natural this was gray. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm going to have to post this on like my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> it, looks yeah. like, it looks like bring your son to podcast day. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. I've never. Okay. All right. Anyway, we were about to segue. I need good. some guidance. I bet you need some guidance. <laughs> it's time for some advice from the least experienced, but the tallest of us. And the most gay hot approved. And the most gay hot approved. <laughs> we're going to stick with that wording. <laughs> Advice that will go for Miles with Miles Bon Signore. What's up, Miles Nations? <laughs> How y'all doing tonight? <laughs> yeah. All right. Have you ever wanted to have a big old swinging thigh with a bulky bicep? I got. Uh, I was scared. Yeah. Swinging thigh. Swinging thigh. Have yeah. you ever wanted a neck so thick you could wrap a stick around it? No. <laughs> Maybe less. Sticks so. They wrap. Gordon Ramsay, Ellen DeGeneres, mm. Ellen Page, mm. and Rachel Ray. There's mm. literally nothing in common between those humans. These are chefs. Ellen better Ellen than better, better chefs than you know, and what they all use is a cast iron pan. If you're gonna buy a pan, buy a fucking cast iron pan, and here's why: nonstick pans are a thing of the past, unless you're cooking eggs, and I don't want to hear it. It was the cheapest thing. That's not what we're here for. We're here to give a good char to your grits, to your eggs, to your beef. And a cast iron pan is going to be what you're going to want. Eggs are hard in that pan. They are hard, but here's a pro tip for eggs. This lots, is a, of oil. lots of oil. <laughs> lots of oil. Lots of butter. Fucking tons of oil. Yeah. And then what you do, also a cast iron pan can act as a nonstick pan if you season it right. 
Uh-huh. So it'll eventually do that. But also, like, if you're trying to cook an egg sunny side up, which is the only way that eggs are could be, except for scrambled, but um, you're going to want to, like, cook the egg. And then if you put the lid over the cast iron pan, the steam is going to cook the top of the white right. and it's going to keep the yolk right. Well, I mean, that happens on a nonstick pan, yeah. too. I always find, though, in a cast iron skillet, <laughs> when I do that, it adds, <laughs> to, it adds the, the drip of the water back in and mm-hmm. it makes a difficult scrape of the eggs off the pan. I, let's get and off. I'm a big e- proponent of Let's get off eggs because yeah. this yeah. is great advice. I yeah. Everyone should get themselves cast a cast iron pan. I don't Skillet. know about rippling thighs, but it's great. Mm-hmm. It, it, like, it, it holds heat really, really well. And the mm-hmm. best part about it is you can put it in the oven. Yeah. So you're cooking a steak. You want to do steak on the grill because it's cold outside. I mean, it's like in the 60s LA. People are like, oh, it's so cold. Mm-hmm. You sear that steak, get it real hot. You put that motherfucker like as hot as it can get, a whole bunch of olive oil. Mm-hmm. I want it to be like just like steaming, just like about to set a fire in your house. <laughs> Bam, put the steak on there, sear it, sear it, sear mm-hmm. the edges, and then wha-blam, blast it in the oven oh, yeah. to can finish I, it off. Medium ask, rare every time. Mm-hmm. Ask for the non-cooking world out there because yes, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm starting to cook. I know what it looks like, but yeah. I don't actually understand what it is. It's just a, a thicker metal. Yeah, so cast iron pan, there's several types of pans. There's like a car, you can get carbon steel, you can get stainless steel, you can get cast iron, you can get non-stick. Uh, stainless steel pans are for searing meat. So they're going to be able to create like a browning between the meat. So steaks you can cook in a, in a searing pan. But like... Se- stainless steel pans and copper pans they're harder to cook with because they're they're like stuff just sticks to them yeah and that's good if you want like a um a crust around something but if you're cooking most things you want to use a cast iron pan because oil like um it's more porous so like oil is going to go onto it it's things are going to come off of it a little easier Ooh. and they re- retain heat really really well and they also last forever because they're like super thick one thing i know is that if you got little scratch marks on your on your normal pans on your non-stick you gotta throw that shit away right now that's teflon getting in your food gotta poison your little belly get it out of there the best part about a cast iron skillet is Mm -hmm. that if you don't have any weapons in your home (laughs) now you yes Mm -hmm. i'm not kidding if someone is intruding in your home and you have a cast iron skillet that is the number one thing you should use because not only do i feel like it could stop a couple bullets but if you get hit in the head with that you're dead wow Oh, yeah. you're fully dead. And you've you guys, thought about this. You guys yes. know. Uh, I don't have any weapons in my house. That's the only weapon I have. Like you're if gonna something run ha- to get the cast iron. Yeah, pan. that's my plan. Yeah. You sleep with a cast iron pan next to your bedside. I, I have a cast iron pan in every room in my house. <laughs> <laughs> just to be sure. Just to be sure. In the closet, I keep the big one locked up. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Don't want the kids to play with a pan that's no. too big for them. It's also, it's like heavy as fuck. Oh, it's so heavy. I have a 12-inch one. It's too big. It's yeah. like so heavy. You can't really lift it with one hand. When you put meat on it, if you're like cooking, if you're especially pretending to like a roast, it's just like impossible to lift because you're dealing with like a 30-pound yeah. like searing hot pan that's like you're trying to finagle into something. I've been getting into baking bread lately, and mm-hmm. the best way to do that is in a cast iron Dutch pot, oven. A Dutch oh, oven. Yeah. It's full sided cast iron pot, holds heat really well. And then the little uh, lid gets uh, some of the steam to maintain some of the moisture. So your bread has always really oh. got a great crust, but also really tender and moist inside. And Dutch oven is when you fart and pull the blankets over someone's head. That's, yeah. right. That's right. God damn, you know what? That brought me back to life, and I'm taking these sunnies off. Wow. wow. The windows to the soul have been opened. Wow. I feel good. Guys, you know what? This podcast revived me. It brought me on a journey of laughs, of love, salamanders. Shout out to the dude that's stone listening to this. Shout out to the ladies who are stone listening to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's about, yeah. that's the podcast, that's right? That's the podcast. Yeah. Let's wrap this shit up. Mm. This has been the Tripod. We're the Try Guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave us leave us some five-star reviews. We like to read your secrets sometimes. If you ever see us in real life, tell us a secret. Uh, <laughs> keep on <laughs> keep on sending us those drunken stone emails. Legally, of course. Until next time, Keith, hit us with the official Tripod theme song. La 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 la